everyone, welcome to my video. Today I'm showing off the Joseph's Coat Technique for the Ton Anniversary Blog Hop and I created two cards for this hop and two videos for today. And don't forget to check out the blog hop because you can win a $75, $50 or $25 gift certificate for commenting and there's 26 new stamp sets to check out and also some incentives if you buy versus how much you spend and things like that. And all of those details can be viewed on my blog. And the description will have the link below um, or you can just visit justinehovey.com. All right, so I'm gonna get started with this technique. Now this technique is super simple. It involves some distress ink and some embossing. So let's get started and dive right into it. Now I'm gonna be using a variety of distress inks to ink up a white background here. Now you can use any type of inks for this generally as long as they're dye inks and maybe pigment inks may work as well but it might take a really really long time for them to dry so I would suggest dye inks only and I'm grabbing a blending foam tool and I am putting quite a bit of pressure on it. This is one of those techniques where it doesn't really matter if you get some harsh lines or your blending's not perfect and that's what's really cool about it because in the end you're only going to be seeing bits and pieces of the color shining through. So I used squeezed lemonade, twisted citron, carved pumpkin, warm lipstick, violet or wilted violet as well as salty ocean. Now many of these colors I used in a previous video this week to make a rainbow technique. It's not exactly what I'm going for for this card and as you'll see in the end it looks a lot different than the card I created the other day. So I'm just finishing up with these last colors and I am being careful that my colors are not getting muddy and blending into each other or blending into another color that doesn't blend well. So I'm just being careful with the purple and blue here and where I put those. And then lastly, I'm just gonna top everything off with a little bit of yellow because yellow generally blends well with quite a few colors. All right, so I'm gonna clean up my mat here and we're gonna get started. So now what I need to do is make sure my panel is completely dry. I'm using a Ranger heat tool for this. This is meant to dry things, not really the best tool for embossing, but more for drying things. While that's setting off to dry and cool down, I grabbed a piece of scrap white cardstock and I'm going to be inking up the sentiment today using some VersaFine Black Onyx ink. As everyone knows, this is my favorite uh, for stamping clear sentiments. Now, now that that is finished, this is one of the stamps from the Ton Stamps, as you can see, and it's a really great uplifting stamp, and it has a whole bunch of uplifting sentiments. It's called the New Pretty. And I'm gonna mount this stamp here onto the black cardstock. I'm gonna hold that down for a second, and then I'm gonna grab my paper cutter, and I'm just gonna cut this down. So I'm just gonna measure so it's about uh, an eighth of the inch of eighth and an inch around and it's gonna look really nice with a nice little black frame around it. And now my card panel is all dry and pretty much ready to go. So I'm grabbing another new stamp from the ton. So now you're gonna see two different stamps, which I also use in my other video that I'm coming out with today. So you'll get plenty of inspiration for these two stamps. This is the poppy cling background or poppy garden, I believe it's called. And I'm going to ink that up with some Versa or Versamark ink. And this is a watermark ink. It's almost like an ink glue. I'm gonna apply even pressure there on my hands on my Misty tool while I'm stamping. And then if you are so lucky that the stamp sticks to the cling stamp, you can even grab a sheet of paper and just really push that down to make sure that it stamps properly and you don't have any gaps in the solid stamps. So I picked that up using some tweezers and I'm hoping everything is going to be dry now at this point. So I'm grabbing a, a scrap piece of paper to catch my straight embossing powder and I'm going to be embossing this with clear embossing powder. So I'm just going to dump the Ranger Clear Super Fine Embossing Powder on here so that it gets all of those really pretty details of that cling stamp. And I'm going to give it a flick on the back to get rid of any excess embossing powder that might be still clinging on there. And remember, it is a really good idea to make sure this is dry or this technique will not work. It's probably even best to leave it overnight. All right, so I'm just cleaning up my mess here, putting away my embossing powder, and then going in with my heat gun. And you'll see here that the embossing powder slowly starts to melt. You'll notice that it's getting shiny on screen, and that's when you know that it is melted and good to go. It took me about a minute to get all of this embossing powder here melted. That is one of the downsides of this type of craft gun, is it really is meant for drying and not for very specific areas of heat. So it did take me a little bit longer than it probably will you. Next up, I'm going to grab my black soot 
embossing or my black soot dye ink and I'm going to go over this. Any black ink is fine for this as long as it's a dye ink and you can use a brayer to apply it, you could use a foam sponge, whatever you like and you can build up as dark as you like. So I'm going around and trying to get it as dark as possible over onto my card here and also throughout the middle and all over the place. Now you might be thinking this looks kind of really gross now and it's not very nice but you'll notice now once I take a dry baby wipe just going to go ahead and wipe off all the excess black ink that was maybe making the embossing powder there stained and the embossing powder resists showing that really pretty color through the stamp and then also the dark areas in the areas that didn't stamp. So I think it looks pretty cool for a background. Now the last couple of steps here is I'm just going to take some 3D foam tape to attach my sentiment and then I'm also going to add a little bit of interest to my card by die cutting a certain area of the card. So I'm just going to do that off screen but I'll explain exactly what I did. So now you see I have my square die here and that just made it a nice stitching pattern along the area that it cut on the inside and the outside which is kind of fun. And I added some glue here to the card and then I'm going to add the rectangle there in the middle. I had thought about adding just the sentiment into the middle and having that white frame around it but then I decided against it and decided to add the square. So I'm going to add the square using 3D foam tape as well. So this is going to pop up off the front of the card as well as the sentiment's going to pop up. So it is quite 3D and quite thick at this point but I really like the way that it turned out and you can see that from the side there how pretty that is. So I hope you enjoyed this technique everyone and you'll that you'll check out the blog hop and all of the new fun things that are coming out from the ton. Here you're welcome to subscribe to my channel, check out my blog or check out some more videos. Thanks so much for watching.